if you don't have acrylic ink, then uh, you can just use your watercolor or you can use um, some normal acrylics or whatever materials you've got. Um, I'm going to use the ink because I want a little bit of stronger color and I want it to be fixed so that when I put some washes over the top, it won't move. Um, and then uh, we may use a little bit of white gouache or a little bit of, um, in the other one, we're going to use a bit of gesso as well. So you might want to have those uh, ready. So let's get started. So I'm going to spray the, um, and this is just another off cut of watercolor paper. So not too big, about A6 sort of size. And I'm going to um, just spray the back because obviously it's not stretched. And then I'm going to start to wet the front of the paper. Use a brush for that, it's a bit quicker. So the first part obviously is just to get the um, initial watercolor wash down. And then once that's dried, I'm then going to put some acrylic ink over the top. And then we'll, um, we'll play into that afterwards once that's dried. So it's kind of a layered process, I think, for today's painting. So nice and wet. Color wise, I'm going to use some, um, what have I got here? I've got uh, a brilliant red, so like an opera rose or a, so I'm going to be using this red here, which is a pretty red red. It's quite a, quite a crimsony type red. So let's just start to mix some of this up. Because I want it fairly, um, fairly bright. And then we'll start to slosh some of this on. And I'll probably spray that a little bit as well. And I'm going to mix some uh, a bit of blue into that as well. So let's go with some bit of ultramarine in places. Give that a little spray in a sec. Have a little bit more pink. Just to get that running. Tilt the board a bit more. So let's just tip that a little bit more. So actually I'm going to tip that back the other way. Just to get that to run up the paper as well. I would have picked this up, but I can't really because it's um, stuck down on the board and I've got the palette uh, mounted as well. So I can't really tip it from side to side, which I would normally do, but I'm just going to let it flow back up to the top before I um, dry that off. So I'm not going to play with this too much. I just want this to be a fairly soft wash or colorful wash, I should say. Just spray the top out just to get it a bit more even. So that's now dry. So you're going to want to get your, um, if you're going to use acrylic ink, get that ready next. If you haven't got acrylic ink, then maybe you could use some normal acrylics or even some gouache. So what I'm going to do now is take some clean water and a clean brush. And I'm going to draw the shape of my trees with this clean water. Well, not the shape of the trees, but the sort of the mass of the trees. So maybe leave a few little gaps for some of that pink to show through. Um, just sort of a, a group of, or a large group of um, color basically that um, on this hilltop. I'm gonna to worry too much about the trunks because We'll be taking care of that with some thicker paint. And then I'm just going to bring this water down, down the board, uh, sorry, to the piece of paper, down to the bottom. Just let it run down. Okay. 
that's nice and wet. Just put a bit more water in there. So you're going to want to have the board tipped towards you, tilted towards you, I should say. So now I'm going to take some um, some black. Actually, I'm going to do the blue first. I'm going to do a dark blue. I'll probably put a bit of black in it. With a slightly smaller brush. And then I'm going to come into that area of wet and just start to bring this blue. Just let that run down towards the bottom of the paper. <clears throat> Bring that a little bit lower. Give that a little spray. Clean that brush off. And I'm going to dip into I've got a red acrylic here, just to purple that blue up a little bit. So again with acrylic ink. Just a little bit of this just to um, vary the colour of touch. I'll work that up into those blues. Let's spray that out a bit more and start to dry a bit too quickly. Bit more red. This is just a, what is this? Crimson, this color. Bit of red into the trees in places. Just a little bit on this side, just to get that hillway to go, go over to the side there. Okay. Clean the brush off again. Back to the spray bottle. Just want to spray this out. Actually, about here now, I'm going to start to add a lot of water because I want this to be light or lighter, I should say. I want to bring the next colour in. I'm just washing this out. Okay. So the next color then will be a, a green, a, a bright green here. I'm just gonna put some of this on. We'll start to bring some of this on into those blues that are already on there. And again, I'll work these together. Just spray. Just to coax the colour down. Okay, that's enough. Gonna let that run for the moment. Mop up. Taking just some clean water and a brush, and I'm just gonna rub into this sky a little bit to start to lift or agitate the paint. 
and just start to lift some color off just to get a bit of variation now into the sky before I bring some more opaque colors in. Because even though the color or the white will be fairly, fairly opaque, they will still need, it's better if they've got a whiter bit of paper underneath them. They work a lot better than if it's too colorful. So let's lift out a little bit over here. A little bit more. And obviously with these being red, you're not gonna get it back to white paper because um, they've stained the paper already, but I just wanna get a little bit of light back in there. Okay, that's probably enough of that. So let's give that a quick dry. Taking some uh, ultramarine. So this is now, I'm gonna use some gouache here, but again, you can use acrylic ink or you can use um, a thicker watercolor paint to do this with. And then, I'm going to use some white gouache as well, like we did last week. Put some of that out. So just some blue and some, some white at the moment. Then taking a brush, it's going to mix the white and the blue together. <clears throat> and obviously I want it reasonably thick. Not too much water in it. It's probably got a little bit too much water. I'm just gonna block my brush off. There we go. Just a bit of blue and white to mix together. And then I'm gonna to start to bring this into my sky. And I'm gonna use my finger just to work the edges, just to soften it in places if it gets too sharp. I wanna let some of the purple break through. Don't want this to be a flat, sky, fairly stylized. And obviously when I'm getting down to the um, clouds or whatever you want to call it, I'm just going to dip into a bit more white. Just break into those edges. Be fairly careful around the trees because I quite like the broken edge it's got at the moment. I want to leave that. Let's clean that brush off. Let's take a bit more white. Clean the white, I should say. Just work a bit of that in. Bring us some of that over on this left hand side. A bit of blue mixed in with it as well. So it's not totally white. It's got some colour in it. A bit more blue. Bring that down to the tree line. Then we've got some 
distant type mountains poking through at the back here. Just indicate a bit of that. More of the blue. A bit stronger now, just to draw some of those shapes. I can use my finger and soften this off a bit. Okay. I'm going to take the lifting out brush. So the brush I was using earlier just to do a bit of lifting out. And I'm going to rub into this a bit now to try and work it together a bit more, soften some bits down. Take some tissue to blot it off. It's too heavy. Try and keep the brush clean. Working into the cloud a little bit. Soften some parts down, even some parts out. So it's not so much variation in there. Sometimes you need to reunify some of the color if it's got a bit too broken up. Help it make sense. Just flatten some of this out. Just to help it sort of read as a cloud properly. Keep cleaning the brush off just to uh, stop the paint getting too dirty. Just soften this edge off here so I can re wet the edge. Obviously, with this being kind of a watercolor based medium, the, gua the gouache is re wettable so you can actually blend out edges and soften them off. And the nice thing obviously with the trees being fixed is you can rub into those without having to worry too much about lifting a lot of the color off. And you can glaze over the top as well. So for example, you could say a part of it is too dark, you could glaze some color softly over the top of it to knock it down, make it less, less dark. Um, which can work quite nicely. Let's take a little bit more blue, slightly stronger. A little bit more of that distant mountain in. Keep it nice and soft or so it's not too sharp. Soften this edge off a bit. Okay. 
Okay, so that's probably, actually let's bring a little bit more blue just down and to the right here, because obviously if you want this sort of hill line to go through, I just need to knock this back. A little bit of this red down. So let's bring a bit more of this blue back here. And then I can actually start to bring that then into the tree line. To actually start to define some of the trunks. Clean that brush off. It's going to soften, soften this down a bit. work that into the watercolour touch. Okay. Let's give that a hair dry now. Pretty dry. So that's fine. So I'm just going to take a little bit more of the blue just to get the rest of that edge of the tree line in. A bit more white, a little bit more of the ultramarine. Just taking a slightly smaller brush here. Darker. So I'm going to make this a little bit darker still. So by darker, I mean a bit more blue in it. So I want some of that um, kind of hill line to poke its head through. Couple of little spots here and there. Just break that up a bit. Can have a little bit more of a V shape. So little V's and Y's are the kind of shapes you want to be looking for with this, these tree trunks to simplify it. Bring the base of it down a little bit lower. down. A little bit more over here. Perhaps this is a slightly thicker coppice trees here. So we don't need to do the whole thing all the way across. Maybe I'll just break into it in a couple of places. Sometimes a bit more interesting if you leave a little bit to the imagination. Okay, that's enough of that. And then finally, I think I'll just take a little bit of the red again. So the red I used in the sky. This is the watercolour red. And some more of the white, just get a bit more white in it. Just a bit more of the acrylic white, uh, gouache white. Just going to add a bit of those two together to make a pink. A bit more white. Okay, and then taking this color. Let's see how light that is. That should be okay. Just gonna punch a few little spots just into the trees. A, to add a bit more light and brightness. 
Um, it's perhaps a little bit over here. That's a bit big, never mind. Can even bring a bit of this pink up into the cloud. Just tap that in. Okay, and that will do that one. So, um, so let's have our tree line kind of up in the distance here, kind of comes down and then away. There's a cut in to the trees sort of there, a bit of land that kind of tucks in and around the corner. We've got the bank of the river kind of coming down like so, sort of <clears throat> like angle, not too much. And then there's this mass of grasses or whatever you want to call it over here. And then that goes out of the picture. So just a couple of shapes, just to break up the, um, the piece of paper. What I'm gonna do is to um, put down a very yellowy wash. So I'm gonna take some water, actually I'm gonna spray the back again first, just so it doesn't cockle too much. A bit of moisture onto the back of the paper. And then I'm gonna wet, pretty much the everything from the tree line downwards. So everything above the tree line, you can just leave, um, leave dry. And everything below, I'm gonna put water into it. Just a bit of, a bit of water on there. <clears throat> okay, color wise, I'm just gonna take a nice bright yellow transparent yellow is all I'm going to use. It's a nice golden -y type yellow. And then I'm going to bring that into this, into this wash, uh, into the water, I should say. And then I'm going to spray the bottom out. So obviously it's going to be very blue at the bottom, so I don't need to make it too golden. Just put a little bit more water on this left hand side. Okay, and just let that run down. Oops, try not to get my gesso to go flying. Let's move that out of the way for a second. So I'll let that run for a moment. So I'm going to start off the gesso in the sky. <clears throat> so just taking a brush, take some of the gesso or white acrylic, whatever you've got, and I'm going to start to drop this in at the top of the board paper, bringing it down to that wash. And just let the two sort of mix a little bit. Then taking the gesso and then starting to work that into the water area. So you're going to pick up um, watercolor paint here. So you just want to wipe your brush off on some tissue, and then you can just um, liberally put the gesso back on again. Just keep knocking off any if you get too much color into your brush. Just knock it off with some tissue and then go back into the white again. <coughs> Excuse me, all the way across. <clears throat> On this side, I'm actually going to start to come down in direction. So 
start to break up this edge. So just some nice downward strokes over this left-hand side. Just a little bit along the grass top, break the edge up a bit. Okay, and that's enough. I'm gonna clean that brush off now. So if it's one of your watercolor brushes, then make sure you do clean it very well so that you don't get any dried gesso in the brush as it will wreck them. Let's give that a good clean. Okay, now I'm going to dry that off. So Actually, before I dry that off, I'm going to just put a few marks into it. So just some scratchy marks, <clears throat> particularly over here where the grasses are, or will be. So just some nice long, long strokes. Clean that brush off. Perhaps a little bit of an indication of where this bank line is. Okay, that's enough. And then with my finger, I'm just going to smudge this out a little bit. Just to soften, soften that off a tiny bit. Okay, and then I'll dry that. So that should be pretty dry now. Some of these areas where the gesso is a little bit thicker takes longer for it to um, skin up properly. That seems to have gone harder now. So you want to make sure that um, before you start playing with this too much, that the uh, the gesso is dry. Otherwise, if we use watercolor brushes, you will get it into your watercolor brushes. Okay. So the next thing is we need to now block in or put some color into our distant um, tree line. So the first thing I'm going to do is just wet along the bottom of that tree line, just so that we've got a bit of a softer, softer edge to it. Taking some, um, let's use some Payne's Grey, watercolour that is, fairly thick, well very thick in fact. So this is just watercolour. So I'm now going to then bring this into that shape and down to that line where I've just put the water. Coming all the way across and up this right hand side in a way. Okay, a little bit more there. And then with the same color, but with a, a smaller brush, I'm going to put a bit of that Payne's Gray. Let's just tidy that edge up a little bit more. Uh, a little bit of that Payne's Gray now into the water line. So our water line sort of comes through, through here. Just a bit of that Payne's Grey just to give us an edge to the bank. I'm going to give that a little spray just on this line, not too much. Slightly more organic than 
is in the reference. touch. Now the bottom section down here is going to be quite blue and I'm going to use um, acrylic ink for this. So I'm going to re-wet this bottom section. Take that up a bit into the, the whites. Take the original or the, the blue color I was using earlier. So this is the acrylic blue. And I'm going to start to bring that to tilt the board a bit more into these areas. Let's get my spray bottle ready. more hands. Okay, so a bit more blue and bring that into these grasses. Dark there. Break up the edges. That there. Okay, and then I'm going to go into some black. Again with the acrylic, acrylic ink. So a nice strong bit of colour down at the bottom here. Okay. Let that <clears throat> merge. So give it a little spray. Let's get the colours to work together a bit more. Okay. So I block up some of these areas where there's some runs. Good. So that's now dry. So the final couple of steps will be to put in the grass color on the far bank. So for that, I'm just going to take a bit of radium watercolor, which is just a green. Just mix that into that bit of yellow that I've got left in the palette. So just a bit of radium, touch of water in it. And then I'm going to start to bring that over the top of the bit more water, over the top of the um, existing colours we've got here. Again, leaving some of the under colour showing through, all the way down to the bank. Let's bring it up. I suggest it goes up and around the corner there a bit. down to the bank line. So over here it's slightly longer grass too, so let's just cut that down just with some downward strokes, leaving some gaps. Okay, and then the same again in the middle here with a bigger brush. a bit more yellow in that one, a bit more of the transparent yellow. Same viridian colour, just more transparent yellow in it. And then start to work that into this grassy area that we've got in the middle here. Again, leaving some of the undercolor showing through. Okay. 
a little bit of the light red, a bit of the brown colour, just in places. Just to add a bit of orange to some of these blues. Clean the brush off. Just make sure that doesn't run down too far. I'm just going to dry that and then I can put the little animal in. So taking a pointy brush, she's my rigger, which was too dirty. Take some of the Payne's Grey, so just the Payne's Grey I was using before that I did the hill line in. And then I'm just going to Try and figure out where we want this little shape, might make it a bit smaller. So I'm going to do a box, just give it a little bit of a neck, pull down for some legs. Okay, and that will do.